everyone, back here with another video. Uh, my name is Kevin, and today I have something exciting. I have a review that I was doing for the last couple weeks on a um, power line filter, and this is the Entrac Audio EF130. Um, so there's a few different uh, ones that uh, Entrac Audio has out. There's a 110, a 120, and a 130. So this is the 130. Um, so I'll let you know how this all started. Uh, a few videos back, I did uh, uh, one specifically on power line uh, filtering. Um, so I got talking to George at Intrac Audio, and uh, we were chatting a little bit about that. And um, he uh, mentioned that he had a new uh, line of power filters. So I was pretty excited and uh, to hear about that. And I'll give you the background on the the power line conditioners that he has, the filters, because um, I currently own Blue Circle stuff, which is no longer in existence, but the old owner and designer, Gilbert Yang, um, is, for Blue Circle, he's the one who built all these power conditioners and filters that I have. Um, so George let me know that uh, Gilbert Yang was designing and building the Entrac Audio one, so that really sparked my attention. Um, so we could chat a little bit more and he said to, you know, drop on by. So um, I got a little few pictures in here of his, uh, of his place there. Um, there's uh, it's a nice, nice listening room, some nice systems in there. Um, it was very enjoyable, very nice place. Um, so went there and he knew what I had as far as power line filtering. Um, so he suggested that I take the EF-130 and uh, you know, test it out that and see what I thought. So we thought we'd do a little uh, review in it for you guys just to see what, uh, um, see what my thoughts were on it. Um, so that's what I'm really excited to do this. Uh, and I chatted a little bit with, um, with him what I was going to do. And uh, so I decided that I'm gonna do two different systems to test it on. Um, in the basement, I have a few different systems, but I have one that's more entry level. Um, it's more, you know, I would say about on the used market, maybe $1,500, um, somewhere in that, uh, in that region. So I thought that would be great to try it against it. And it already had some, uh, blue circle power filtering on it. It had the FX2, uh, what's the model I have downstairs? FX2 XOE CXT, which doesn't mean anything to you, but that's the model of that and it was probably about a $500 line conditioner at the time and it was it was really good I actually had two of those conditioners or filters before and I had one on this system uh, years back so I know what it can do so anyways I thought the system downstairs has that and I thought I would try the 130 in there and I also uh, brought in a pair of speakers that I thought would uh, you know, do good for the test too. It's an older pair of speakers that I've had that I'm very familiar with. They're the PSB Stratus Silvers, um, and they've had, you know, the caps replaced and the crossovers redone, uh, resistors and inductors and the wiring and everything. So anyways, these speakers, the PSB Stratus Silvers, I chose them because they always, always really reveal the system that is behind it. So if you have a cheaper system or cheaper gear or more expensive, they always tell a, you know the real tale. They're gonna tell you what's, what's behind that and they're very picky and fussy like that. Um, you put cheap, a really cheap system on it and they're, they're, they're not gonna do them justice. So anyways, I threw them in there. I'll put some uh, pictures up there. I think you can see what, uh, what I had going. Uh, but anyways, so I ran some uh, tunes through it uh, and then I basically changed the conditioner and uh, you know, listen to some tunes and I let it go to the next day just so I could get the capacitors in there to charge up and stuff. So I was quite surprised what it did. I made notes here just because um, doing so many different testing and that, uh, I find you know, it's good to make notes just if you're listening and then you're doing it right back to back and, and you've got uh, you know, no time in between before you're doing a video, it's just easy to do. So the first thing I noticed in that kind of entry level system, uh, I thought there was a uh, more texture uh, to the to the instruments. The one thing that stuck out there was a uh, an acoustic kind of recording, acoustic drums, and very soft recording, and they had 
uh, the brushes, the drummer was bra uh, dragging the brushes across the snare head. And just the texture of the snare drum head and those brushes, that really stood out and it was uh, kind of like night and day from what it was before. So I was really surprised to hear that. It was really kind of that, it kind of had a, you know, organic feel to it or sound. Um, you, you could really hear those brushes. It was more lifelike. Um, another thing, the imaging and the sound stage greatly improved. Um, and I know those speakers and I, you know, very familiar with them and that sometimes where they suffer a little bit is in the sound stage and the imaging, but it greatly improved on it. Uh, not that they sound bad, it's just that might be one of a little bit of a weaker point unless you, you know, you pull them way out from the wall, uh, the back walls and that improves. But I noticed that was a great improvement in that. Um, and I put down here, the 130 brought more of a lifelike experience to the music. It just seems more alive. It just, uh, more at ease. It would just kind of breathe more. So that's what I really noticed um, with that changeover going from the FX2 to the, the 130. Um, and I put overall, it took the took this moderate entry level system to new levels. Um, so that's, it, you know, it was bringing it up pretty good, a few notches. And I put in here, it made it sound like it was a more expensive system. So I think if I was blindfolded and I didn't know what was happening and somebody was, you know, changing out things, I think I would have thought that they left the speakers the same and changed out the gear. Uh, it seemed like I was listening to a lot more expensive system, just that, you know, the cheaper integrated that's on there and just a, you know, $250 DAC. Uh, I, would, I would think I was listening to more to the system of, you know, three, four or 5,000. That's, that's what it sounded like to me. Um, so that's the kind of improvement it did just on that entry level system. Uh, and I put down here as a last quote here and it would draw you more into the music. It seemed more real, it would just draw you in. You felt more like just listening in because everything sounded more uh, realistic uh, and it had more uh, dynamics to it too. I, I, you know, the, the, the bass guitar and the kick drum just had more slam to it. And I thought, you know, with the, a better conditioner, I thought it might, you know, maybe cut back a little bit, but it was the opposite way. It gave more dynamics. So that was, what I really thought how it took that system, taking it from here to sounding like more of a, you know, a higher end system that you're living, a more expensive system. So that's basically what I experienced in the basement. Um, after that, I brought the 130 up here and what I previously had plugged in was the 660 SI, which uh, George at Antrack Audio knew I had. So that's what he wanted me to compare it with. And, uh, you know, I was really interested to see what what the changes would be in the, in the sound of the system. And I thought, well, you know, how much better can it get? And that was just me, you know, thinking off the top of my head, it might improve it a little bit. Um, so, and I mean, this thing's about, uh, you know, it was a thousand bucks in its day. And I mean, five, six years ago, whenever I picked it up. So it's not, you know, overall cheap unit, um, but uh, that's what we're comparing. You see it plugged in, plugged in back here. So I've had, I would say about three, three, three and a half weeks, I guess, with it upstairs here. And so I had a lot of time to, you know, think about what I'm hearing and the differences, but I'm going to tell you what I wrote down, um, you know, as I noticed them right away. And I mean, as time goes on, it even improves more. Um, so this, the N-Track uh, EF-130, the first impression was the background detail became more apparent and more evident. Even the micro detail uh, was more evident. Now, I thought that, you know, if there was gonna be more filtering that I thought, just me thinking in my head that it might take away from that, but it actually brought that out. Uh, I'll explain a little bit, you know, at the end here, um, but that, all that stuff, detail was that was more apparent, okay? And the next thing that I noticed was the sound was more open, add more depth to the recording. So the, just that front to back layering and just the depth of the recording, I think it was even, I'm gonna say once I'm talking about depth here, is digging in deeper into the recording. So it was, you know, pulling more of that out. And I was really surprised because these Moabs create like a wall of sound. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't think it would change it that, mu that much. I thought it would kind of remain the same, just be a little more clarity, right? But I brought, uh, 
lot more to it, right? And the next thing I have here, definitely more clarity and more space around the instruments. So there's so much clarity, you just added that space around the instruments, you could pick them out. Um, and I really noticed in an acoustic guitar, one recording, he was, you know, picking away in the acoustic and it sounded like it was right in the room. And uh, everything was, you know, kind of more separated. There was just air to breathe around all the instruments. So I thought that was uh, interesting that it did that. And I mean, there's a lot of drivers here and th these are pretty seamless. And, but it added that much more to it. Um, so I was really impressed. And what really took me away, it was kind of a jaw dropper, was uh, these Moabs here. Um, one of the best speakers I heard do vocals on that I've had in here in this room. It, well, I would say it's the best speaker I've had that does vocals, they, they sound phenomenal. And I put down here, the vocals even seem more in the room, very impressive in brackets I put. Um, so I was very impressed with how the vocals just seem like they're right in the room. The person was right in the room. So I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, I wasn't expecting that much of a change in the vocals. I thought, you know, clean things up a little bit. And that's what I was expecting, not to make it sound like it was really in the room. Uh, as far as the bass region, uh, it, it did wonders for that. The bass was more dynamic. Uh, and overall, it was smoother and more balanced. So it just seemed to be more balanced. That frequencies didn't really stick out as much. It just seemed that the bass guitar, you could hear every note. Uh, sometimes you get into hearing the bass guitar and some notes lack a little than others, but it just seemed to be more balanced. So, and it was more dynamic. Um, and these speakers, the Moabs can put out quite a bit of low frequency. So not that it was booming in that, it just had that more authoritative dynamic to it. So um, it's definitely, the F EF-130 is not hindering it or robbing it of any power. It's, it's, it's very passive, right? So um, that was non-restricting. That's, that's the word I would say. It doesn't restrict it at all. If anything, it gives it more. Um, and across the board, it just brought more realism to the system. The system sounded just more realistic. So that's what I was uh, thinking. It just overall sounds more realistic. And I mean, I mean, this is a pretty, you know, half decent upscaled system. And then you have a good line conditioner on there already. And then you're moving it up to the, the other one. And I didn't, I didn't expect it to be uh, this EF-130 that good, put it that way. Uh, really surprised me. And the last thing I have here is that about the background, it was just, I, it was just black. Like I, when I was doing these tests, I would shut my furnace off and the fan and everything. So I wanted it to be dead quiet in here. And uh, the background, I mean, you still heard hiss of the recordings or, you know, buzz of a, a, somebody's amplifier or whatever things that happened in the studio, those micro details that would, would uh, pop out. But, um, the, just it was like a painted black background and then added all the instruments that's what it was like and it, my first impression well, I'll bring you back to this was hearing all the micro detail and how it was more apparent uh, and, and just all the detail in general and I think it has to do with this black background that it creates such a black background that all that you know sound we're hearing we can hear every little bit of it um, so I thought that was, you know, caused by that black background, how I can hear all this more micro detail, which I thought would be the opposite of be trying to filter something. So um, that's what it did for this system. Uh, it greatly improved it. And I mean, I've had it hooked up here for a while and um, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it's almost like you don't want to unhook it because you know you're going to be going back to what I previously had, which is... Not that there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that when you hear these improvements, um, it's, you'd like to keep them, right? So um, that's, that's, that's kind of like what I'm hearing now is what, you know, I'd like to keep it that way. So uh, I might have to end up, uh, you know, putting one of these in my system just because we always like to upgrade and, um, you know, we're always looking to upgrade our systems a little bit so any little thing will help, but this thing was a huge, huge difference. So I would like to say that's, you know, Gilbert to design that uh, amazing job and to you, George, too. Um, nice unit here, Antrack Audio. Your power filters are amazing. I'd like to hear the 120 and the 110. Um, those are other ones by Antrack Audio and I 
I've got the prices here of them. So this EF130 is the one that I have hooked up now. Uh, the, the retail, now this is Canadian, so it's in Canadian funds, is um, $1,759, so $1,759. Uh, the EF120 is $1,339. And that's Canadian and the EF 110 is 889 so there's quite a spread out there um, when I was talking to George he said the EF 120 um, would be you know in the ballpark of this uh, one I, that I own so that would be you know we're talking thirteen thirteen hundred dollars a thousand dollars so um, you know it's kind of in the ballpark of you know the price and what the sound but I'm, I'm guessing that the 120 would be uh outperform this because you know uh it's it's newer uh, designs that uh, gilbert has designed for Entrax, so he's always he always taking things further and further so i would guarantee that the 120 would beat that one um, so i'd be curious to do you know compare those two um but for myself since i'm always looking to upgrade i would probably be after the 130 and uh so there's a few other ones in here and i'd just like to let you know too there is a limited edition of these models um they're in a nice it's in a in general they're in a nice steel case i'm really uh, happy how they how they um built this unit it's a nice uh, square box it's got like a, a matte finish it looks really tidy and uh, nice but there is uh a, a limited edition model an le and it's a $200 Canadian upgrade. Uh, and it's got like, I'll put a picture up there. It's got the gloss finish and it's got the engraving of N-Track audio on it. So it's a little bit more nicer looking unit. I think it looks great. Um, it's got that gloss, but not that there's nothing wrong with the, you know, just the standard version. It looks amazing too as well. So it's just for if somebody wants to, um, you know, have a little bit different of a look and have the limited edition model. As far as the electronics in them, they'll all be the same. It's just the casing and, you know, there's the cost of the powder coating, engraving and all that. It's not cheap. So that's basically what the extra cost is there for. So um, if you're thinking about getting one, that might be something you might have to look at. Do I want the limited edition or do I want the standard one? Um, so that's, you know, uh, something you have to look at. But anyways, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, if you're interested in, you know, finding more info about these. Uh, uh, in Canada, you'd have to contact, and I'm going to put the contact information at the end of the video here um, for both US and Canada. So if you're in Canada, um, you're going to be contacting George at Antrac Audio, and he's in Markham, Ontario. Um, so that's who you're going to contact. And all these prices were in Canadian. Um, so that's who you're going to contact about uh you know the filter or or if you want to um you know make an appointment with him to check out some of his gear that he has and all that kind of stuff because he's great at helping people um you know find out what you're looking for and 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 uh you know to upgrade your system or to find the components that would work great in your system because he has a lot of experience with that um as far as the us us viewers if you're looking at this I'm going to leave the contact information as well at the end. Uh, the place that you're going to have to contact is TLP Audio in Yorkville, Illinois. Um, so that would be, obviously it'd be in US pricing. So the pricing is going to be different. You'll have to find out about that. So that's, if you're in the US, it's available to you as well, which is awesome, I think. Um, Canadians and the US. Now, if you're outside of that, um, I guess you would have to contact either or and see if, if it's available outside of uh, North America. So I just, uh, I'm going to wrap things up here. Just want to thank you for watching this video and uh, hopefully it sparked a, you know, interest in, in maybe getting in or venturing into uh, power filtering or just gave you a little bit more knowledge about it or uh, maybe considering, uh, you know, getting into that uh, power filter because I think any system could greatly improve by it. Um, for myself, I have to have it on there. I've seen what it can do and how it improves my system. I almost think of it, you know, you've got the components you want, and but now you're going to run them at their best by having the, uh, you know, perfect power. I would say you've got the 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 power filtering, so you need that in the front line. 
Um, so anyways, I'd like to just uh, leave it at that and say God bless. And uh, if you want to subscribe, hit uh, subscribe below, get some more videos. Or if you want to hit the like button, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So thanks a lot, guys.